What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, June 21st. This is your exclusive video for pro members to go over all the alerts and positions for the week. Before we jump into the trades, let's take a look at who got caught being hot this week in the community. Uh, this week, uh, we had a member who's been with us for several months. Uh, we started doing some posting, sharing trade ideas. And and one, one thing that kind of caught my eye was he... He posted a question about some directional strategies that he's been testing and kind of trading. And, you know, at the core of our portfolio, we're, we're net option sellers. We like to a lot of times start our positions delta neutral. But by no means does that mean we don't do some directional trading as well, uh, both from just a speculative directional assumption to also adding different directional bias in our portfolio. So, like I said here, there are a lot of ways to skin the cat. And actually, that's kind of a weird term, right? I don't even know what skin the cat means, but maybe back in the day they they uh, actually skinned cats. And anyway, uh, <laughs> but anyway, that that's the that's the power of this community. You know, it's all about sharing different ideas, different perspectives, different strategies, sharing with the community. That is the definition of trade hacking and what we are doing here. So. I uh, just wanted to say congrats to Scott Griffith. Uh, congrats, Scott. You got caught being hot. Keep up the good work and continue sharing ideas. That's what it's all about. I think Scott was kind of worried that, um, you know, because of a specific methodology that we trade, he wasn't sure if it was uh, kind of uh, allowed to post, you know, different stra uh, trade ideas in the community. But absolutely, that's what this is all about. Everybody keep up the good work. Loving the engagement in the community. And uh, for, for being hot this week, Scott, I sent you a private message, but you get to pick up some trade hacker swag. We've got some t-shirts and mugs. We're going to be order, uh, adding some additional cool swag in there before long. Uh, but let's go to the alerts for the week. Starting with Monday the 17th, we had our first trade was a closing trade in EWW. We had a short strangle on in EWW, booked uh, over 40% of max profit on that trade. Nice contraction in implied volatility. Gave us a chance to book that winner. Uh, EWW, the implied volatility now is a bit low to be putting on new positions. So you can see we've got you know IV percentiles at 10, IV rank at 7. So I had that nice contraction and implied volatility gave us a chance to book that winner, uh, but not looking to re-enter an EWW at this time. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in ZW, wheat. Uh, we closed our short call vertical in wheat in the July cycle. Had just three days to expiration. Uh, it was deep in the money, so we took a loss on that piece of the trade overall. We're still down on wheat, just battling back. Just continue to add positions, take them off, add positions, take them back, take them off till we get to a profitable point. And we've been doing this for, gosh, quite a while now in wheat, but that's just kind of the name of the game. We always want to have exposure in one of the grains, corn, wheat, soybeans. So, uh, you know, just have, continuing to have that exposure in wheat is kind of what we're doing there. And let's take a look at what we've got going. So we closed out that remaining call vertical in the July um, cycle. We've still got this one in August. And remember, when I say August, I'm going off of what Toss calls August. Uh, Tastyworks actually calls this one July. But the one with 35 days to expiration, that's where we've got a position and you can see we've got some profit there, not, not enough to take off. And so we're just going to continue to wait on wheat. Next trade, closing trade in Netflix. So uh, we're getting a little bit short in our portfolio. So we wanted to add a little bit of long delta in there. And actually, we weren't necessarily getting too short. But um, you know, based on kind of what the market was doing, it looked uh, as anticipated, like it was going to continue higher. So I wanted, I didn't want to be too short. Uh, so just added in a directional long bias trade, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying. We don't we don't shy away from directional strategies, especially as long as we stay within our range of of a balanced portfolio. In our mind, a balanced portfolio is having kind of between one to one and five to one. So this is what I'm talking about as far as directional trades. This is purely a directional trade. Had some probabilities on its side. But, you know, to me, in our mind, as long as you have a balanced portfolio, you're not super, super long or super, super short, 
because you never know which direction things are going to go. So having a balanced portfolio, and, and when we say balanced portfolio, we like to have between one to one and five to one of short delta versus our theta. And that short delta is beta weighted to SPY. So beta weighted to the S&P 500. And as long as you are conscious about your overall directional bias and you have a kind of a set standard of what that range should be as far as your bias one directional or another, there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking some directional shots. In this case, uh, we did this in Netflix. It looked like it had a good setup to have a little bit of, of a bounce to the upside. And we were only in this trade for four days, booked over 35% of max profit on the trade. And so we we're kind of in and out of that one. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in Intel. So we put on a short strangle after earnings on their last earnings announcement. Uh, option prices stayed elevated, sold some premium, uh, kind of went against us. We had to make an adjustment. And then um, we're, we're to the point where we we're well over 50% of max profit after that initial adjustment. And so we just wanted to kind of book that credit and roll out extend duration a little bit. We're still down. Uh, I think maybe $100, $200 on the trade. Uh, so we just wanted to extend duration. I did mention Intel announces on 725. So we've got a little bit of time before their next earnings announcement. And if we're profitable, even by just a little bit, we'll probably just close out before earnings. Uh, if not, we'll make a decision as we get closer. But if we take a look at Intel, here's where we're at. So pretty dead centered right where we right where we made the roll up a, up a tiny slight bit since we've done the roll, but just waiting for time to pass in Intel. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in DIA. So we closed out the put vertical side of uh, one, of, one of our sets of iron condors in DIA. Price breached our upside break even. So we just closed out the untested side, still holding the call uh, vertical side as well as our other full iron condor. So if we take a look at DIA, here's that short call vertical. You can see price kind of blew through our upside break even. So we closed out the untested side, still holding that one. And then in the same cycle within July, we've st we've also got this full iron condor where price is kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range. So need a little bit of downside to benefit that. Next trade was an opening trade in McDonald's. So McDonald's has earnings coming up on... Uh, oh, I actually didn't even list it, but we did a, a pre-earnings long straddle in McDonald's, uh, 36 days out, so a little bit longer than we typically do these, uh, but implied volatility is so low. And on a trade like this, we like to target kind of 15 to 25%, uh, kind of on the low range here. McDonald's is not that volatile of a stock. And so let's take a look at Mickey D's. So here's where we're at. We've got this long straddle. You can see we're up about 75 bucks just after one day because of the price of the options have gone up since we entered this trade, but just looking for some movement, either up or down. And, you know, we've got about uh, 17.55 is the uh, risk we have in here, total total risk, total buying power. So we want to capture, you know, 15, 20% of that. So if we can, if we can make 400 bucks in one direction or another, that's kind of what we're looking for here. If we take a look at the chart, I mean, look at implied volatility. It is just uh, minimal, you know, IV percentile at two, IV rank at three. And with that earnings coming up, a uh, good time to potentially buy some premium. And, and, and McDonald's has been in a real tight range here the last couple of weeks. So if we can have a little bit of a breakout up or break down below, uh, should be, should be good on that one, but we will see what happens. And then with implied volatility so low, an expansion going into earnings, which typically happens. You can see implied volatility expanding going into this earnings announcement. Uh, and this one kind of popped up and then just kind of traded uh, a little bit of a decline into this earnings announcement. So if we can get a pop from where we're at now, that's definitely going to help our position as well. And then it's just another diversified strategy, right? I mean, a lot of our premium selling, net selling option strategies are delta neutral from a perspective of wanting to stay within a range. In this case, with McDonald's, we want it to bust out of the range. So just, again, diversifying our strategies. And last trade of the week was a closing adjusting trade in SMH. So we had two pieces on to SMH, two different sets of short strangles. Uh, we were right at about 50% of max profit on this piece of the trade. And, and then uh, we're still holding our other short strangle. So we went ahead and booked this one just to reduce our exposure. Implied volatility is still uh, decently high 
in SMH. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, it's at 58 on the IV percentile. And so we went ahead and closed out that one piece, still holding this one. I will look to add another centered short strangle in SMH next week, assuming implied volatility stays decently high. Um, and then we'll continue to obviously manage this one, which is in July. When we enter the new one, we'll do that out in August, which has 56 days until expiration. So that's the plan in SMH. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions. Oil has made a big move up the last couple of days back in the center of our range, which is great. We, uh, we were way out here, I think even close to our short strike even, uh, but just kind of held on and let the probabilities play out. It's come all the way back up to center. We're up a little bit on the trade. We've got a max profit on this of 1430. So trying to get about, you know, six or $700 in profit out of that one before we do anything. ES, we've got our long put vertical that we've been kind of holding for that short delta exposure, uh, needing some downside to get back into range on that. We've got, how many days do we have? 28 days, so we've got some decent amount of time there. Uh, gold, had a couple questions on this in the community. You can see price has breached our upside break even and certainly warranted, you know, you could have adjusted today. I don't have any issue if you wanted to adjust today by closing out that untested side. But we do got a little bit of juice, a little bit of premium left in that put vertical side. So we're just going to give it over the weekend. If we get a nice move back down, then we'll get back into range. If it continues higher, we'll definitely close out that put vertical side and potentially sell some more premium. Let me see on GLD where the IV is on uh, gold. Yeah, it's nice and high. So adding another piece to this next week will be on the radar for sure. Uh, if we take a look, you know, it spiked up and then it spiked up again today, but it's come significantly down off of its highs. Uh, so if we get a little bit of a retracement to the downside, we'll be back in business, back in range. Uh, but either way, we may look to add to this next week. Natty Gas has been on a vicious slide to the downside, so we could definitely use a little bump to the upside here, a little two-sided action. If we take a look at our Natty Gas We've got these two different sets. We're sharing the three put on the put strike. And then we've got two different call strikes, but fairly, fairly similar positions. Uh, you can see prices down here. It's, it's out of our range here. And all of a sudden, I'm getting an update here. So let me close that out. Um, and so if we take a look at just our calls, you know, we've, we're, we're close to making an adjustment here. If price continues lower next week, we'll roll down our calls. Of course, if we get a bounce back to the upside, that's what we're looking for, and we'll we'll continue to manage as needed. We've got 35 days to expiration, so got some decent time left there. Bonds, we've got a short straddle, which was originally a short strangle. We adjusted into a short straddle. You can see prices right here. If we take a look at our untested side, which is the puts, you can see we still got a little bit of premium left in there. If prices continue higher next week in bonds, we will roll up our puts. And as far as our time frame goes, we would stay in that August cycle with 35 days to expiration. Uh, of course, if we get a, a down move, we're we're not too we're not down too much on this trade. When we made the roll, we were fairly close to even. Uh, so any kind of a slight down move, and if we get a down move down to 152, for example, you know that's a $1,400, $1,500 swing in P&L. So we would just be able to close out with a profit at that point. So we'll see what happens. I mentioned ZW, Apple. Uh, we've got this uh, long put vertical, looking for some downside in Apple. You know, price had made this big flush down and then bounced up. We were looking for a little bit of a continuation to the downside, but that didn't happen. It kind of just ripped higher. And so we're trying to get a little bit of uh, downside action in Apple before we do anything there. Uh, same, very similar thing in John Deere. Had that big push down, it bounced up, and we're looking for a potential continuation to the downside. We were looking to add short delta, uh, still being strategic about that. And then, but, you know, again, continue to rip higher in Apple. John Deere. So we're just fighting that one. We'll continue to to uh, hold on to that one for now. DIA, I mentioned that one. FXI. So we've got a, an iron condor on here. Could have made an adjustment here. You can see price is, is outside the range. But we if we look at that put vertical side, again, we've still got a, a little bit of premium left. But if it continues higher in the next week, we will make an adjustment there. Of course, if it comes down back into range, we will just kind of hold and manage from that perspective. 
Goldman Sachs, another position that we put on for some short delta. You can see prices hanging out right here just inside range. Uh, looking for some downside to benefit this. As soon as we put this on, we actually had a, a decent amount of profit, but we were looking for a little bit more, and we needed that short delta. Um, unfortunately, it kind of reversed course on us and came up. Uh, so we're we're still within range, but just looking for some downside in GS. IWM, we've got an iron condor. You can see price is kind of hanging out here in the upper end of the range. Uh, could use a little bit of downside and some ben uh, th more theta decay before we do anything there. IYR, we've got two pieces on here. We've got this uh, short call vertical, which was from, uh, uh, that we rolled. It was part of an iron condor. We closed out the untested side, rolled this one out to July. Uh, and now we're just waiting for some more downside before we do anything there. And then in addition to that, we have an, another full iron condor, which is pretty centered, got a little bit of profit, just waiting for some more in that. KRE, this is uh, originally a strangle adjusted into a straddle. You can see we've got few hundred dollars in profit back after that roll. We're still down a tiny bit, pretty close to even here. So what we'll do, we've still got 28 days to expiration. Uh, uh, next week, we'll probably either make a decision to close this for small profit if we're profitable, or we may look to roll that out to August to extend duration and try for some more profit. Uh, depends on applied volatility, but right now it's nice and high, so we would consider rolling and keeping that, uh, you know, because if we took it off, we may just, you know, enter a new position anyway. So we'll see where we're at with that one next week, but could be a close or a rolling situation. I mentioned McDonald's, QQQ. Qs have been really strong. We've got those two sets of short call verticals, which are way out of our range. Uh, so we'll look at least rolling one of these. We've got 28 days to expiration, but we'll look to roll at least one of these sets out to August just to kind of diversify our time, get back into a positive theta position. Uh, we need some downside in the Qs. I mentioned SMH. SPY, we've got two different pieces here. One is this iron condor with price kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range here. And the other piece is a piece that we had rolled from the last cycle. And you can see price with this strong movement has come out of range. So looking for some downside to get back into range on that piece. XLK, kind of a similar situation. We've got a long put vertical, looking for some downside to get back into range there. And XRT, we've got this short strangle with price hanging out up here. Just looking for a little bit of downside and some theta to decay before we do anything in that one. You see implied volatility has been slowly contracting since we put this on, uh, but just need a little bit of downside to get back into center on that one. So, that's all the trades. That's all the alerts. Hopefully we get some more opportunities to add some positions. We've got a decent amount of cash. I think we're using about 35% of our net look in buying power right now. So definitely have some room to add some positions, but also don't want to force anything. We like to, you know, if, if we can get a little bit of a downside movement in some stocks, get a little pop in implied volatility, that's always a better, uh, better situation to enter new trades. So Hopefully we get some of that and potentially close out some for winners in our current portfolio. Everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you next week.